Suprabhat, a very good morning to my friends in India, and Konnichiwa, a very good afternoon to all the dignitaries from Japan. We welcome you all to the third online India Sakura Science Club Alumni Meet 2021. Today's Alumni Meet is co-hosted by India Sakura Science Club Alumni Association and Japan Science and Technology Agency. The theme of the program is Sakura Science and Beyond. How we can contribute to deepen mutual cooperation to, towards promotion of science, technology, and innovation between India and Japan. I, Antara Puranik, and Ms. Mansi Sharma are the moderators of this event, and we are here to take you through the proceedings of the event. Before I hand over the screen to Ms. Mansi, I request all of you to write down your questions, if any, in the question and answer section. We will have a Q&A session at the end of the talk of the dignitaries. I now hand over to Ms. Mansi. Uh, let me tell you, friends, that today we all are extremely lucky to have such highly esteemed speakers who have agreed to grace the occasion with their presence and have spared their valuable time to interact with all of us. So, with the permission of the dignitaries, I would like to introduce Dr. Jitendra Chuk, Head Coordinator of Sakura Science Club India. Dr. Jitendra Chuk is a faculty member in the departments of chemistry and biology at IISCR Pune. Dr. Chuk developed novel strategies that allowed for the first time studying the formation of megadeltan sized self assembly of proteins by NMR. So now I welcome Dr. Jitendra Chuk. Thank you, coordinators uh, of India Sakura Science Club Alumni Association, Ms. Antara and Ms. Mansi. Konnichiwa and good morning, one and all. I hope all of you are keeping safe and fighting the pandemic in your own ways and helping each other to come out of this situation. Uh, on behalf of Indian Sakura Science Club Alumni Association, myself, Jitendra Chog, welcome all the dignitaries and delegates for participating in the third alumni meeting of the India Sakura Science Club Alumni Association. Honorable Mr. Hiro Hiroyuki, Member House of uh, Representatives, Japan. His Excellency, Mr. Suzuki Satoshi, Ambassador of Japan in India. His Excellency, Mr. Sanjay Kumar Verma, Ambassador of India in Japan. Mr. Hiroki, Senior Deputy Minister of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology, Minister of uh, Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology, Japan. Dr. Sanjay Mishra, Advisor and Head Inspire Division, uh, Department of Science and Technology, Ministry of Science and Technology, India. Our most valued invited guests, distinguished speakers and friends. Our first alumni meeting was hosted at Embassy of Japan in India by organized by Japan Science and Technology Agency in 2018. And second meeting was hosted at IIT Delhi, jointly organized by uh, Indian Sakura Science uh, Club Alumni Association and Jap uh, Japan Science and Technology Agency in 2020. And it, today it is my privilege to officially open the third alumni meeting. Uh, and we all look forward to the address by dignitaries and distinguished speakers to enlighten all of us. We had also invited posters to be evaluated for a competition under two themes, winning over COVID-19 via international relations and dynamic cultural mix between India and Japan. And I must say we, we have received several great entries and we also look forward to display of such selected posters and the winners for the competition. Hope and pray that the pandemic will end soon. Please be vigilant, maintain physical distancing, use sanitizers and masks, get vaccinated and stay safe everyone. With this brief overview, I officially announce the third alumni meeting as open. Arigato gozaimasu. Over to Antara and Mansi. Thank you, sir. So uh, it is my pleasure to introduce today's second speaker. Dr. Teruo Kishi. He is the Director General of Sakura Science Program Headquarters, JST. Dr. Teruo Kishi was the Director General of RCAST at University of Tokyo and also Director General 
of the National Institute for Advanced Interdisciplinary Research. He was the Vice President of the Science Council of Japan and President of the Japan Federation of Engineering Societies. He has been awarded with many in honors, including prestigious Honda Memorial Award in Japan. Now I request Dr. Teruo Kishi to enlighten all of us with his talk. Hello everyone. My name is Kishi Teruo. Family name is Kishi. I am in charge of the entire Sakura Science program at JST since April of this year. The Sakura Science program is a program to invite talented young people from all over the world to Japan for a short period of time. And through getting to know Japan science and technology and culture, it expands the global network of exchange and also help all of you make great strides Strike it in your future career. This program started in 2014 and has invited more than 33,000 people up to today. From April this year, we'll make some reforms, such as ex expanding the target country to the whole world. However, we assure you that the relationship with the 41 eligible countries and regions so far, including India, will never shrink. As for India, this program started in 2015 and had supported the invitation of about 3,000 people so far, from the high school, university, research institutes, government agencies, and so forth of India. Among them, about 1,200 of them are the excellent high school students, teachers, researchers, and government officials that were invited directly by JST itself as receiving organizations. As part of such direct invitation programs, JST invited in 2019 and 2021 about 50 young researchers in total from top University of India, such as Indian Institute of Technology, Indian Institute of Science Education and Research, Indian Institute of Science, National Institute of Technology, and so forth. Each time, we organized India-Japan University exchange, exchange meeting at JST, and they met the researchers of Japan to further promote academic cooperation and collaboration. Now, considering the importance of the relationship between Japan and India, as well as the high potential of India in science and technology, I would like to invite more people from India by our program. So, please tell your friends and colleagues about the Sakura Science Program. The development of science and technology in India has been remarkable in recent years, and we recognize that India is already leading the world in some fields, and we are sure that India will become one of the most advanced countries in science and technologies in the near future. Until last year, I, as an advisor of science and technology to the Minister for Foreign Affairs, have built relationships of trust with leaders of science and technology around the globe. 
I have been thinking about what can be and must be done in the field of science and technology in particular, in order to realize the SDGs of the United Nations. What I got from such experience is that the basic goal of our activities is building relationships of trust and deepening mutual understanding through interactions of people. I am confident that the Sakura Science Program is making some significant contribution to Japan, India, and even to the world in this regard. We have set up alumni associations in major countries like India in order to continue people-to-people -people exchange because we do not intend to implement our program as a simple invitation program. In India, we had held alumni association meetings in New Delhi in 2018 and 2020 and formed the India Alumni Association, which is headed by Dr. Jean Tender Chu and the other supporting coordinator. Today, thanks to them, we are able to hold this third alumni meeting online, despite the COVID-19. I'm very pleased with it and I would like to express my gratitude to the coordinator. With the diversification of the Sakura Science Program, I hope that the Indian Alumni Association will steadily increase the number of excellent and diverse numbers towards the future. And I strongly hope for the expansion of exchanges through the Alumni Association. In addition, JST would like to provide our best support to you so that the alumni members will again come back to Japan as a place to study, work, and do your research. We do hope all of you here today will fully enjoy this meeting. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Thiro Kishi, for your motivating words. Uh, now, I would like to introduce to you all Mr. Hosoda Hiroyuki. Honorable Mr. Hiroyuki Hosoda is a member of House of Representatives of Japan. He worked at the Ministry of International Trade and Industry, Japan, and was elected the Chief Cabinet Secretary of Japan in 2004. Honorable Mr. Hosoda has been the Chairperson, General Counsel, LDP, and Diet Affairs Committee, LDP. Now, I would like uh, to request Mr. Hiroyuki Hosoda to come and grace with his words, grace us with his words. I am Hiroyuki Hosoda, member of the House of Representatives. As a president of the Japan-India Parliamentarians Friendship League, I would like to offer a congratulatory message to the participants of today. India and Japan established diplomatic relations in 1952 and will celebrate the 70th anniversary next year. With more than uh, 400,000 people being infected every day in India, I am very much concerned when it will subside. In recent years, uh, the leaders of both countries visit each other almost every year and the summit talks are held. Now, both countries are one of the most important political and economic partners for each other. In 
2016, uh, I myself visited India as the leader of the Japan-India Parliamentary Friendship League mission and met uh, Prime Minister Modi. Uh, at that time, we discussed the need for uh, further development of India-Japan relations, uh, especially in the fields of economy concerned on infrastructure uh, development, uh, such as the Shinkansen high-speed railway projects and exchange uh, of people as well. Among our things, uh, other things, uh, cooperation in the uh, field of education, science and the technology is a, a key element. Many uh, important projects are underway. It's a common understanding that exchange of students, researchers, uh, faculty members in particular is the core of the Japan-India partnership. The fact uh, that the Sakura Science Program uh, has brought about 3,000 uh, young people from India to Japan so far is many, uh, very uh, significant and it was uh, often referred to uh, in the joint statements of the Prime Ministers of India and Japan. I have uh, heard uh, this Sakura Science Alumni uh, meeting uh, has uh, been held in every year and uh, this meeting was uh, good for prom promoting com communication among the members. Uh, though uh, this year's meeting is held online because of COVID-19, I believe this meeting would be useful for your future life and mutual understanding. This program uh, provides a good opportunity for more and more Indian people to visit and experience Japan. It also offers a very important opportunity for the globalization of Japanese students teachers and the faculty members uh, who receive them. Uh, since last year, due to COVID-19, uh, cross-border tra traffic and exchange of people have been almost completely stopped. It is very unfortunate uh, that uh, the students who enrolled in Japanese universities cannot uh, come to Japan to study. I will uh, do my best uh, to support them from the uh, political side uh, so that the situation will normalize soon and young people from all over the world can enter uh, Japan to study. Uh, since exchanges and the interactions uh, between people and the foundation of natural, national development and the cooperation uh, between countries. Uh, I believe uh, they uh, must be continued despite uh, the various difficulties. Uh, I know that even th these days the Sakura Science Program uh, continues to promote cross-border exchange programs online. Uh, the Japan-India Parliamentary Friendship League will strongly support such programs and activities. I will try my best for further uh, promote uh, such ex exchanges between the two countries. And I sincerely hope that you, as a br uh, bridge between India and Japan, will also or join hands uh, towards the same goal. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Sir. It is my great honor to introduce His Excellency, Mr. Satoshi Suzuki, the Ambassador of Japan at the Embassy of Japan in India. 
His Excellency has graced several very important positions. To name a few, he was the counselor at Embassy of Japan in the UK and also in Indonesia. He was the director, first division, intelligence and analysis service. Minister, permanent mission of Japan to the international organizations in Vienna. Director General, Intelligence and Analysis Service, Director General, Foreign Policy Bureau, Ambassador of Japan to India, and currently the Ambassador of Japan to the Kingdom of Bhutan. I'm sure that all of you are eagerly waiting to hear him. Sir, I request you to enlighten all of us. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Hosoda Hiroyuki, Honorable Member of House of Representatives of Japan, His Excellency Mr. Sanjay Kumal Valma, Ambassador of India to Japan, Mr. Matsuo Hiroki, Deputy Minister, Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology, Dr. Sanjay Mishra, Head and Advisor, Kiran and Inspire, Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, Dr. Kishi Teruo, Director General, Sakura Science Program Headquarters, JST. Dr. Jitenda Chu, Main Coordinator of India Sakura Science Club Alumni Association. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, konnichiwa and namaskar to everyone. I'm very pleased to have this opportunity to make a congratulatory remark at the third India Sakura Science Club alumni, alumni meet. First, I'd like to uh, express my sincere gratitude to the Indian Sakura Science Club alumni, uh, Japan Science and Technology Associ uh, Agency, and all other stakeholders for organizing, organizing this reunion, even amid the COVID-19 pandemic. I fondly remember attending the second alumni meet held at IIT Delhi in February last year. At that time, I keenly felt how this alumni association with about 2,900 members has evolved to form an important body, part of the bond existing between Japan and India. I'm delighted that alumni meet is held again this year albeit online. Among the several people-to-people -people exchange programs between Japan and India, I would say the Sakura Science Program is one of the most successful ones that is attracting increasingly more young talents. The fact that so many people have participated in this uh, science and technology exchange is of great significance and will have a positive impact on our future bilateral partnership. After all, the foundation of any relationship between countries is people to people exchange. That is why when Prime Minister Suga and Prime Minister Modi spoke over the phone recently earlier March, they concurred to further promote exchanges between our peoples so that the Japan-India special strategic and global partnership will be further elevated. Exchange of uh, science, scientific talents have additional benefits to the development of our two countries. When scientists of Japan and India come to know each other and engage with each other, they can together create new knowledge and technology. The Sakura Science Program provides the first step for this to happen. I therefore have high expectations for the 2,900 young Indian scientists who have visited Japan over the past six years with their deep knowledge about science, technology, and culture in Japan. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19, no one could visit Japan under this program last year. However, I want to commend 
your, uh, ourselves for making the best out of this condition that we are presented with by utilizing virtual online exchanges to keep up the interactions among young scientists of our two countries. There have been many activities such as online interactions between high school students and online seminars about studying in Japanese universities that were conducted over the course of the past year. I believe that all these efforts are sowing the seeds of blossoming of actual people-to-people -people exchanges once we overcome the COVID-19 pandemic. At today's reunion, I'm told that there will be a lecture on research uh, cooperation between Japan and India and uh, an introduction to study and working in Japan. I hope that today's reunion will serve to rekindle the experiences and the connections you gained during your stay in Japan. I'm also hoping that it will provide some useful hints and ideas for all of you to uh, act to be active in Japan or to stay connected to Japan. Currently, Japan is making efforts to accept more foreign students from India and around the world. There are various scholarships offered by both the government and the private sector, including the government-sponsored international student program. Efforts are also being made to invite excellent researchers to Japan. I hope that you and those around you will be able to make use of it, these programs to study, work, and conduct research in Japan after this pandemic. In closing, I wish for a very successful and fruitful outcome of today's reunion and further success of the Sakura Science Program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Satoshi Suzuki. Now, uh, I would like to welcome His Excellency, Mr. Sanjay Kumar Verma. He is an ambassador of India to Japan at the Embassy of India in Japan. Ambassador Verma was also the Indian ambassador to the Republic of Sudan and later served as Joint Secretary in the Ministry of External Affairs, New Delhi. Prior to his arrival in Japan as the ambassador of India, he was posted in the Ministry of External Affairs, New Delhi as additional secretary and was also in charge of Cyber Diplomacy Division. Now, I request Mr. Sanjay Kumar Verma to come forward and say a few words. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Sharma, to have introduced me. Uh, Mr. Hosoda Sensei, uh, member of uh, House of Representatives of Japan, His Excellency uh, Ambassador Suzuki uh, in Delhi, uh, His Excellency the Deputy Minister uh, Matsuo Hiroki, uh, His Excellency Dr. Kishi Teruo, the Director General for Sakura Science Program at GST, and uh, uh, Dr. Sanjay Mishra, Head and Advisor, Kiran and Inspire in the Department of Science and Technology. First of all, please allow me to extend my congratulations and greetings to all of you who have been able to successfully meet uh, uh, in these uh, difficult situations, though virtually. Uh, I'm sure that all the stakeholders will make best use of this platform, which is available to all of us. Uh, I'm also sure that once the full vaccination takes place on both sides, those uh, scholars who are fully vaccinated uh, will be able to travel in each direction, uh, each other's direction in a more meaningful way and therefore interact with each other. Alumni for any institution, in particular for uh, institution such uh, as great as uh, uh, the Sakura Alumni uh, uh, Association, uh, are always the bridge to two cultures and two societies. You are eyes and ears of the two governments in order to measure up the success in science and technology uh, international cooperation policies. I'm very glad to see that 3,000 of you uh, have been able to connect to each other, uh, and which really speaks a lot 
about the success of this particular program. Uh, my congratulations go to all of them who had conceived this program and then would have taken it forward. When we talk of uh, India-Japan Science and Technology Partnership, since all of you have been connected for some time, so I'm not going to go into the details of uh, uh, what has been done, but I would rather focus on what could more be done. And when I talk of that, the first thing which comes to my mind is disruptive technologies. Uh, how are we going to deal with the world which is at the moment engulfed with disruptive technologies and it is going to be further uh, uh, intensified uh, through the use of disruptive technologies everywhere, which means that the decision-making time will be less, uh, uh, the, the kind of decision which has to be taken has to be uh, more appropriate, the shelf life of technologies will be less. So all these things will have to be considered by you who are at the for forefront of science and technology uh, uh, in its implementation, and then suggest to the policymakers as to what best can serve science and technology. In this direction, I would like to mention three main concepts. One is co-innovation. Now, what is co-innovation? Co-innovation is to understand the problem of the societies, the larger problems, sit together, discuss, debate, and come out with an innovative idea as a solution. Once you have that idea uh, uh, developed, then go to the second phase, which is co-creation. So use that idea and create a solution. When you create that solution, there is a need to measure out that solution vis-a-vis -vis the real world and see if the solution is successful. If not, tweak it again and make it more successful, realistic to the ecosystem you live in. And the third and the final phase is co-production. Once the solution has already been tested out, it has been found to, success, to be successful, take this uh, uh, product out, whether it is service or physical product, take this product out and start producing it using industry as your additional stakeholder. Once we are able to do that, only then we can uh, beneficially say that we have mutually uh, achieved something through this kind of an interaction, participation, and indeed uh, discussion. Uh, I'm very glad to see that digital mode is working fine and all of you are able to get together, uh, but don't let it be once a year uh, uh, interaction. If there is a possibility, form small committees uh, focusing on certain areas and these committees could meet intersessionally in a year, uh, I'm sure that there could be 20, 30 such subcommittees uh, on different areas of interest of the two countries as far as science and technology is concerned. And they can keep meeting intersessionally within the year. And when we'll uh, meet the next time, all these subcommittees are able to present their reports as to what all they did discuss and if they come out with new innovative solutions uh, during those discussions, which could then be taken forward by the two governments. Next year is going to be the 70th anniversary of the establishment of uh, India-Japan diplomatic relationship. Uh, it was established in 1952. Uh, can we look through this platform, one or two indicative, uh, uh, indicative items to commemorate the 70th anniversary from the point of view of science and technology and the point of view of bridge that you are between the two societies and the two cultures. Uh, uh, most of you would know that uh, uh, the, the intensity of interaction between India and Japan in science and technology at the government and institutional level uh, have been quite good, uh, 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 except for the COVID period where we have not been able to do much physically, but yet there had been a lot of interactions uh, over the digital mode. And through that, we have been able to achieve a lot of convergence of ideas uh, uh, in cyber physical space, in IoT, in artificial intelligence, big data analytics, robotics, quantum computing, nanotechnology, uh, and similar fields. Uh, these fields which I named, we had specifically uh, conducted seminars of scientists and policymakers of, of the two countries. And I'm glad to tell you that each of these seminars or symposia was attended by no, not less than 
100 scientists from each side. So it was a great success. Uh, uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to getting their input and feedback for taking these areas forward. Thank you very much for listening to me. Uh, and I wish all the success uh, for your deliberations. I hope that uh, you'll be able to suggest the two government something to carry forward uh, uh, as new ideas or those existing ideas where we need to deepen uh, our understanding relationship and policy making more. Thanks once again, everyone. Wish you all the best. Stay safe. And arigato gozaimasu. Namaskar. Dhanyavad. Thank you, Honorable Sir. Honorable Mr. Matsu Hiroki is the Senior Deputy Minister of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology in the Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology, that is MEXT Japan. Now I request Mr. Matsu Hiroki to enlighten us. Hello, I am Matsuo Hiroki, Senior Deputy Minister of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology. I am very gratified to have this opportunity to make a few remarks at this third Indian Sakura Alumni meeting. At first, I would like to express our heartfelt sympathy and condolences to the people of India who have been suffering from the latest waves of the COVID-19 pandemic. We in Japan sincerely hope this tragic situation will end as soon as possible. With the prime ministers of our two countries paying mutual visits to each other nearly every year, India and Japan have built very friendly relationships. As a Quite the lateral meeting held this March between the leaders of the United States, Australia, India, and Japan. The leaders shared our democratic values and confirmed the strength of cooperation for dealing with the defining challenges of our times as members of Quad. At next, as well, we have been committed to strengthen our ties through cooperation and person-to-person -person exchange in the fields of education and science and technology. In particular, the changes between the younger generation conducted under the Sakura Science Ex Exchange Program are very important for building cooperative ties in science and technology for the future. I am very pleased that this kind of an opportunity has been arranged to today to further these ties. Since the launching of the program in 2015, over 2,800 excellent young people have been invited to Japan from India through the Sakura Science Exchange Program. In addition, for three straight years, for fiscal year 2017, administrative officers who are supporting the administration of science and technology in India have also been invited to Japan. We are also very gratified that among uh, those young persons invited under this program, over 150 up to now have visited Japan again and been active in various pursuits at the Dijing Japanese universities, including the University of Tokyo, Naoya University, and Yokohama National University. Even so, we are still in the midst of the severe COVID-19 pandemic. I strongly believe that person-to-person -person ties as a foundation for everything. India and Japan are vital countries for leading Asia, both in the, the areas of geography politics and science and technology. I am concerned that continuing to develop the friendly relationship we have built up to now based on our strong bonds of trust 
will be extremely important going forward. From now, Next intends to increase the numbers of the excellent people invited to Japan under the Sakura Science Exchange Program. We greatly expect after they return to India, those invited under the program will continue to be interested in Japan and will pick Japan as a destination for further study and employment in the future. With exchanges continuing at various levels in business and industry and academia, the Sakura Science Exchange Program is very significant as a grassroots exchange program. And we would like to further activate it in the future. Finally, I hope this alumni meeting will be very fruitful and I wish all of you further success in your activities from now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Matsuhiroki. Now, I would like to invite Dr. Sanjay Mishra. He is Head and Advisor, Kiran and Inspire, Department of Science and Technology, Government of India. Presently, he is Advisor, Science Department, Scientist, Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, and deals with policy grant management, science and technology, policy planning, technology development support, etc. Starting from 2015, DST has selected and dispatched about 60 excellent students to Japan every year for Sakura Science High School program. Those selected students are the top awardees of the Inspire Manux scheme, that is Million Minds Augmenting National Aspirations and Knowledge, which is one of the flagship programs of DST. Now, I would like to invite Dr. Sanjay Mishra to say a few words. <clears throat> Good, good morning, everyone, and good afternoon, and kohun banwa with my Japanese friends. Uh, respected dignitaries uh, who, have come, uh, who have come to attend this program, uh, <clears throat> I think this is the third meet, third Indian Sakura Science Club meeting. And uh, I'm very happy because uh, I think I have attended all the two, the first meeting which held uh, in 2019 uh, in the uh, Japanese embassy in the Delhi. And the second meeting, which also I was able to attend in the IIT Delhi. So I feel I'm very happy that now we are moving to the third meeting. So first of all, I would like to congratulate and thanks uh, on behalf of the department to the government of Japan and JST, who thought of this program, uh, the Sakura Science Program, which I believe is now bringing the fruits and now coming in a big way, especially for countries like India, where we have already uh, <clears throat> send about 3,000 plus students, right, from school students, college students, who have benefited from the program. So this is thanks to the uh, government and GST for the wonderful work that they have been doing. Now, on behalf of the Department of Science and Technology, as uh, already pointed out, we have been participating through Inspire Manak program, where we have been sending about 60 students every year under Sakura Science program. And uh, this is just a confirmation that those students who are being sponsored under the Inspire Mana program, the visit under the Sakura Science program is very, very beneficial. When they come back, we have got the testimonies. They have got a different perspective about the science and technology. So this is just to put on record the, 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 the success of the program. Now, the other point, which I think already uh, a couple, couple of uh, speakers have pointed out, uh, I would like to point number one, uh, because uh, this, Alumni Association, which started two years back, I would like to congratulate them that now, because I did the meeting and second meeting to the thought process discussed. So I'm very happy that under the pandemic condition, also the alumni and coordinators, they are able to program this event. However, I would like to reiterate a few points which I have said to the alumni, because we need to further strengthen the alumni association. And the reason is very simple that the government program is a catalyst. We can give one chance to move the bridge. As earlier pointed out, the Sakura Science Program is a bridge between India and Japan. So the government can support under the program to move a student one time and two times. But now the time has come when the alumni and the ex-student, uh, they need to benefit by themselves with their contacts in the countries. So in other words, a student who is benefiting under Sakura Science for a school student should try to explore for undergraduate studies or postgraduate studies or PhD studies. Those who do for PhD, they should try to further explore the already existing linkages of joint collaborative R&D program. So in nutshell that 
it's a chain reaction which need to be uh, which need to be improved and increased and further increased in in course of time now the second point is like uh, i would like to again emphasize to the alumni that uh, it is not only the duty of you know the alumni to work for themselves for their own professional career but also to help and mentor the new students the first batch or the new batch which is coming for this program alumni can become a mentor guide those who are who are going for under the exchange programs and this establishes and third point is that <clears throat> that this program is also not only between science and technology as earlier pointed out includes the cultural dimension the social understanding between the two, two countries so these alumni they need to work uh, within the group within their peer group and they can help the both the governments and both the snt sectors in further strengthening the cooperation so these are the my three suggestions and another point is uh, i think uh, earlier i think uh, his excellency ambassador sanjay brahma has also pointed out that apart from this annual meeting which happens you know earlier which happens physically and today we have got this virtual so in future i have already pointed out earlier also that we need to have a good portal and also a list sir or listing of the student so that there is a virtual communication among the alumni because they can help each other in many ways which governments cannot do or we, we have got limitation of the program and timing but they, within the alumni they can always help each other and and also inculcate the newer members like the uh, sakura science alumni they can talk to their school their college their iits so that the more students and more fellows from the countries can take benefit from each other so this is all my best wishes to alumni and my best wishes to gst for running this program for future and on behalf of the department of science and technology government of india i would like to reassure and reconfirm full support for the program in future which is visible uh, i think I, i must point out at this point that in last year in the meeting between the dst and gst uh, and jst there was suggestion that we should also invite some japanese student to india and i'm happy to share that the last year the dst has already approved and because of the pandemic we could not invite but uh, but but as a matter of fact wherever there is a you know a favorable situation the under the program of the inspired department of science and technology will be inviting a few students from japan to visit in the in indian uh, annual festival of the inspire manak program so that shows that how the relationship is further strengthening and growing so with these words i won't take much time because there are many other programs waiting for that and once again i thank the the, the uh, government of the japan the jst and the coordinator of the alumni of sakura science program that yes we have come to this level and we need to move further and for arranging this l1 b thank you very much thank you sir friends the next two speakers are the awardees of the pravasi bhartiya samman awards 2021 professor murli dhar miraila is a member of board of councilor and professor at shibara institute of technology japan dr miraila has been the recipient of several prestigious awards to name a few amity global academic excellence award in 2017 sit excellent education award in 2019 best faculty award in 2021 and pravasi bhartiya samman award in 2021 now i invite professor murlidhar miraila sir please thank you puranik can you really hear me yes sir yes sir. okay thank you uh, good morning good afternoon ladies and gentlemen this is uh, professor miraila from shibara institute of technology first of all i would like to thank uh, sakura science organizers and uh, jst uh, japan science and technology for providing me a valuable opportunity to deliver a special lecture in third indian sakura science club alumni meet 2021 due to the time limit uh, first uh, i will share uh, universities uh, where i am working then i will move to the some research activity finally i will show how i am contributing to the to improve the relation between the india and japan <coughs> so just uh, you can see like uh, our university was uh, founded in 
by Professor Shiro Arimoto with the motive of nurturing practical engineers who learn from society and contribute to the society. Uh, SIT has three campuses, two in Tokyo, in one in Saitama, about uh, 30 kilometers to the north of the capital. And also SIT having a 17 department, which all cover most of the technological fields. Uh, here is the some of the information about our uh, ranking and also global uh, activities. At SIT, you know, tremendous strategy and efforts were implemented towards the globalization under the top global university project. Uh, as a result, and you can see the bottom 1,692 international students had visited to the in 2019. If in 2020 we succeeded improving the THE ranking to 35, is the I think in Japan more than around uh, 880 universities. And also like uh, my educational background mainly focus on superconductivity and it's uh, interesting phenomena, which is creating the potential revolution of the in the respective field of medicine, transport, and energy. You can see the left hand figure, the limitation of magnet above the energy superconductor. This is a machinery effect due to the nano pinning. You can see the nano strips uh, with the expanding tunneling microscope. We will be called pinning effect. One can make strong, powerful magnets. This new phenomenon was attracted uh, worldwide, and uh, you can see the middle like, levitation of the woman, and side is a three Tesla superconducting magnet for several industrial applications. Also, uh, as we developed a new class, I discovered a new class of ITC ternary superconducting compound that is a light rated NEG material. This is like, uh, you can see like a uh, right hand figure, uh, the improvement of a reversibility field. Means that is the re reflecting the superconducting property, you know, the highest irreversibility field at 77 Kelvin in 15 Tesla. Means one can make very strong magnets, even though like more than 15 Tesla. And also in the bottom figure, you can see the, we discovered the new class of uh, nanoparticles in the, in this matrix, uh, in the energy matrix. As a resultant, one can make it like a very high critical current density close to the 90 Kelvin, that is liquid oxygen temperature. As a result, first time levitation at liquid oxygen temperature was demonstrated. This is the making the permanent magnets. One can use like non-contact liquid oxygen pumps from the medical as well as uh, space technology. And this is the, it's uh, very important to overcome to the CO2 emission reduction along with the energy savings. Uh, we designed and uh, constructed the prototype uh, 30 meter and 300 meter Bismuth 223 superconducting cable and succeeded a train running test in RTRI. A left figure uh, can present the new generation of railway systems. The main goal for the 2050 is uh, superconducting cables with uh, natural energy sources, that is solar and wind. So like that uh, technologically is like uh, superconductive, you know, this technology will be upcoming new technologies, which will be transferred several day to life applications uh, in the case of uh, medical transport, uh, science and technology, as well as like uh, any, uh, already some of the applications like the Maglo is going to be public for 2027. We already like MRIs are coming up for the using uh, working with uh, liquid nitrogen temperature. So it's like a very uh, wonderful uh, research work is going in Japan. Anyone interested in alumni, please uh, visit to SIT as well as uh, any part of the Japan. This I will move to the what we are doing in the have to work uh, like uh, so in order to attract uh, talented students from India, we made several smart program to foster the collaboration between the various uh, prestigious institutions in India. Just you can see, just I made it like a lot of collaborations from at SIT. Like uh, this is like uh, several programs like PhD innovative program, Sakura science program, advanced project based learning program, international high school internship program, global project based learning. This all of uh, programs to invite the especially like uh, Indian students, I made it. Uh, here is the Sakura science program, of course, uh, the Sakura science uh, is going to funding for the, these programs. This program is uh, mainly, you know, to come someone come to the SIT, we are going to do like within seven years, like so systematic, like uh, cultural pro uh, activities, robotic workshops, field trips, 
final presentation like that we are making so systematic this like uh, like that where we invited more than 10 batch of uh, uh, universities like uh, from india several south and uh, north uh, east and west like uh, we are inviting several parts of the country and is like uh, one more interesting is like uh, apbl advanced project based learning this is the two weeks uh, research based program it is collaborated research between the different universities improve the scientific and technological visibility at the sit uh, 2019 we successfully invited five universities at a time and uh, we made it this is the main idea to contribute the research uh, outcome you can see like the apbl program after the program like within seven days program we made it like uh, eight research uh, contributions and also like uh, another interesting program is like a phd innovative program this uh, sit three years ago we started uh, an invitation to concept with our foreign partners universities for example we have to invite a phd students innovative program we selected like a pilot program from iit madras students from different countries they can stay like uh, three months then eventually they have to carry out SIT research laboratories and uh, eventually publish the results results in the journals. So this is the another program. In this program, within three years, we made it like 30 publications. Just I put it here, 23, even though including the science. So it's like a wonderful up to date. No, almost all, all the all are contributed. Each student contributed one minimum one paper. This is the another program. It's like GPBL. This is also similar to solve the challenge real world problems, uh, like uh, including uh, our uh, SIT students. But this is uh, program is not restricted to publish the research paper, but they can work on the, they can make it the teams and they can work together and they will be do so many activities uh, in the future. This is the main, uh, this is like uh, international high school internship program. This uh, main idea to start this program is to globalize the Japanese university schools and uh, students. Uh, actually, no, three promote the diversity in Japanese universities to expand students in learning experience behind the traditional classroom. Too. This program also, like uh, I think 2019, more than 63 different nations, uh, different students from the various nations are attended to the, take the part of this program. This uh, program also more successful and very interesting. And uh, I just, I want to trust the people like uh, alumni, like a global full-time program at SIT. Like uh, we have started like 100% English programs, IGP. This is the bachelor program. The second one is like a global course of engineering. So that is the master program. Anyone can attend. This is also full 100% English program. And also like a doctoral program fully funded. This is a three years program. Anyone interested, please uh, visit uh, SIT and uh, shorter program or long term program. I'd also like uh, we started like a GLC Global Learning Commons. This platform which help the assist foreign students to feel home and make uh, friends at SIT. Many cultural programs will be conducted weekly basis. This uh, right side you can see the cost of living in Tokyo. This like uh, Japanese yen like thousand uh, dollars. It is uh, comparatively any other countries. It is very very cheap. So I can say like. Uh, to support the, if uh, like uh, I can uh, certainly appeal to the all alumni of Sakura Science Program attendees to visit Japan, to visit Tokyo, especially you know, Japan is like a highly technological oriented country, highly safe in the world, and also provide the large research grants and more freedom to the research. So I hope uh, some of the alumni students will be attend the in future in Japan as well as SIT. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Murlida. Uh, we have a few questions for you, uh, which the participants have asked. I hope you can answer them. So one of the questions is, uh, what is the admission procedure for PhD in SIT? This uh, admission for PhD is the twice a year. In this case, just uh, you can submit the application form via internet, everything is available in the website. We, in this program, no, we will fully funded like uh, $1,500 per month if they are selected. And also we will be a guide to the local accommodation. 
we have a team of uh, international batches so they can do all the help from them okay uh, the next question is is there any super advantage of superconductivity economically yeah of course uh, because no it's like uh, if if you are thinking uh, like uh, nmr uh, mri magnetic resonance and uh, during the pandemic no everybody is carrying the their uh, data analysis no in that case like uh, when you use like a high tc superconducting magnets it is the more cheap damn cheap compared to the low tc magnets and also the due to the low resistance uh, almost all resistance is zero in the future dc superconducting cable will be crucial role because uh, in the economical no in the world wise uh, almost all energy resources going to end so in that case uh, solar or wind or we have to be depend in that case uh, so uh, this superconducting cable will be transport the energy without any loss so i think uh, it's like uh, superconducting technology will be the one of the crucial role it is uh, uh, now the in japan like subitomo and fujikura is uh, trying to reduce the price of the superconducting cables uh, so i think uh, such a cables can be crucial for the various uh, prospects I guess the next questions are all about getting admission into SIT and uh, the admission procedure. So I can say that you can find all those details on the website. Yes. Okay. All are so, in the website, and also it is everything in English. Okay. So moving on. Thank you, Mr. Prof. Uh, Murlida. So now we will move on to our next speaker. Uh, who is Professor Rajiv Shah? Professor Rajiv Shah is a professor in Graduate School of Media and Governance at Kyoto University in Japan. He is co-founder of Delhi-based social entrepreneur starter Resilience Innovation Knowledge Academy and chair of board of two Japanese non-government agencies, Seeds Asia and CWS Japan. Professor Shah was the chair of the United Nations Science and Technology Advisory Group for Disaster Risk Reduction, and currently he is the co-chair of Asia Pacific Science Technology Academy Advisory Group. Dr. Shah is also the recipient of Pravasi Bharati Samman Award of 2021 in the education sector. So now I would like to invite Professor Rajiv Shah. Thank you very much, Mansi, uh, Honorable Husuda Sense, Your Excellency Ambassador Suzuki. Ambassador Verma, Dr. Kishi, Mr. Matsuo, Dr. Misra, Dr. Dixit, and my good friend Murali. Also distinguished participants from India and Japan, dear students, ladies and gentlemen. This is a great honor and privilege for me to participate in this very important event. I congratulate ISCA and JST to organize this event and thank you for inviting me. At the onset, my deep condolence for all the COVID-19 victim in India and Japan, and also deep sympathy and prayers to the family, especially the family members who are having this suffering. Uh, first, uh, a bit of my background, why and how I came to Japan. Back in early 1990s, when possibly most of our participating students were not born, uh, I was doing my research on earth science and wanted to do some analysis of the rock mainly the geochemical analysis and isotope age dating. And that time we didn't have the equipments in India. And that particular equipments were only in three countries, Japan, US, and Australia. Unfortunately, my Indian professors had some uh, communication and connection with Japanese professors. And that's how I landed up in Yokohama National University as a mixed sponsored student. I completed my master's and PhD here in Japan. And now I, when I look back, that what was my key learning in the education sector? There are many things actually, but I would like to uh, specify on three things of Japanese education system, and which actually appears to me very attractive. Number one is homogeneity of quality education. You know that every country, the top universities are the top. Similarly, in Japan, Tokyo, Kyoto, and all the top universities are very good uh, academic level. But even if you go to a medium level university in Japan, even if you can get entry to the medium level university, 
their education level is still extremely, extremely good. And they focus always some very unique area of the regional characteristics. So that's number one. Number two is freedom of education. I think uh, in Japan, one of the key characteristics of the higher education system is that you can take courses from different disciplines. You can make your own roadmap of your whole four year of undergraduate or two years of masters. So I think this flexibility is extremely, extremely good. And this nurture the lots of new potentials in the students. And number three is the big respect in the education field. When you are in the education field in Japan, you get a big respect from the people and the community. So those were possibly three key learning for me in the education sector. Now over 25 plus years of professional career in Japan, I've been very blessed to have very bright Indian students in my previous university, which was Kyoto University and my current university, Keio University. In Kyoto, I used to have mostly the mixed sponsored student, uh, mostly the uh, selection from the embassy in Embassy of Japan in India. But in Keio, I still have mixed student, but also we have self-sponsored student and obviously the education, the language of education is English. Two years back in Keio University, we established India Japan lab with the objective to undertake cutting edge bilateral multilateral research on different topic, enhance higher education collaboration and partnership and facilitate exchange of intellectual capital. The lab collectively addresses, analyzes, learn and nurture the issues related to India and Japan and beyond to make it relevant to the global communities. So we have Indian study course then idea incubation for students. Actually last year we did uh, a few online hackathon with some of the Indian universities, IITs and NITs. We have the internship program and also linked to many Japanese universities, uh, especially for the internship program. And obviously specific research projects. Uh, we have three key pillars here. One is on the development environment disaster. That's where I belong to. Then we have another very strong pillar of emerging technologies. Uh, Ambassador Varma has pointed out about that, the innovation and emerging technology and how that important pillar can actually bring these two countries together. We have some professors who are like the leading edge expert on AI, drone, IoT, 5G, also leading the digital transformation in Japan. And the third one is on the culture, yoga, music. So we are working with several IITs like Rurki, Hyderabad, Guwahati, NITs like Nagpur, Durgapur, Indian Institute of uh, Science, then some other universities like BHU, Madras universities, and so on. In this India-Japan laboratory, we aim to have a blended mix of Indian and Japanese talents for exploring different types of job opportunity. And that's very important, both in Japan as well as in India. Some are in academic sector, some in the private sector, and some also as the entrepreneurship development to form the startup. We have very specific startup grant from the university where the university student and faculty, they can do some sort of disruptive new ideas and so on. Uh, you know that many of, um, many of you possibly know this word called jugar, which is in Hindi word for innovative mix of improvised solution. I think Jugar innovation is one of the key strengths of Indian student, as well as the Indian startup. And to me, I always think that if this Jugar innovation can be linked to the Japanese culture of, we call omotenashi, which is a Japanese word of quality of service. And another very important word, which is Kaizen, that means the quality control, which makes actually this made in Japan brand so you keep on checking the detailing of any product and there cannot be a better mix. So this, remember this three key word, Jugar, Omotenashi and Kaizen. And if we can have a balanced mix of these three word, I think we can possibly make a new revolution of innovation in different sector, not only for our two countries, but I think to the global community. And to me, 
that's the reason precisely why you need to come to Japan, why you need to study here, why Japanese students also need to go to India. And earlier, our colleague from DST has also pointed out that uh, there is a new scheme uh, DST is starting. So I really congratulate DST for doing that. I also hope that Japanese students get more interest to India and try to understand this Jugar innovation concept. You know that from India, um, on an average, around 100,000 per year, and the students are going to US. 10,000 students go to Germany and also to China. But in Japan, I think it's still a few hundred, like in the range of 1,400, 1,600. And most of the students who go to US possibly go for a job prospect. But I think with our joint collaboration between India and Japan in different sector, the job market both in Japan as well as in India is expanding. And that's possibly another reason why you should come and study, work in Japanese farm, work in Indian farm, and try to contribute uh, for this India-Japan collaboration as well as to the global community. I will very much look forward to see several of you in your future in Japan. And thank you very much once again for listening to me. Thank you and Namaskar. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, to all the participants, because of time limitation, we cannot take questions in this session. Your questions will be answered via email. So the next speaker, Professor Hiroaki Wagatsuma, is Associate Professor, Department of Human Intelligence System, Kyushu Institute of Technology. His areas of specialization are non-linear dynamics, emergent intelligence, robotics, computational neuroscience, sport biomechanics, and rehabilitation support. Professor Hiroaki has received his PhD from Tokyo Denki University, Japan. He has a research experience on brain-inspired systems and mathematical analysis of associative memory of artificial neural networks. Now I request Dr. Hiroaki Wagatsuma to enlighten us with his talk. With his talk. Hi. <coughs> Can you hear me? Yes, sir. It doesn't work, yeah. Hmm. I'm sorry. If it's not this one. So uh, I'm coming, to, uh, I'm the uh, just a moment, it's a bit troublesome. Just a moment. Okay, sorry, Bertie, I, I have a trouble on the computer. C could you change the, uh, the speaker and uh, next person? Yes, for sure, sir. Now, I would like to invite Dr. Manish Piani. He was in, um, in 2004, he was invited as research scientist by JSD in two major national projects, CREATE and CREST, for 10 years from 2004 to 2013. In India, Dr. Biani serves as a founding director of Biani Group of Colleges and Biani Biosolutions Private Limited. Dr. Biani is the recipient of numerous prestigious awards, with the most representative being 2006 JBOUP Award from International Union of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology, and 2012 the Photopolymer Science and Technology Award from Pho uh, Photopolymer Society in Japan. So I would like to request Professor Biani to come forward and say a few words.
Is it is it audible now? Yes, you are audible, sir. And the slides is okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mansi, and thank you, the organizers, especially the Nishikawa San and my former students Nikita San, who invited us before. And I also convey my greetings to Her Excellency Sanjay Kumar Verma, uh, Her Excellency Sujiki Satoshi, and people from ministries Hiroki San, Hiroki Dr. Temo, and Dr. Sanjay Mishra, and of course my friend uh, Professor Mirella and Professor Rajiv. I think uh, it is wonderful a chance to share my experience and knowledge with all the alumni, which is coming from India to to participate in this Sakura Science very important programs. Actually, for me the Sakura Science is indeed a unique name, uh, which Japan has started, uh, because you know Sakura, which belongs, uh, which comes only once in a year, and it lasts only for one week. So we call Sakura as a hope. So if we can create a hope in a year, maybe I think the year can be very productive for the rest of the time. So for this, I think Sakura is very important. Uh, in this today uh, third annual, I want I want to convey some message with my experience that. Uh, how we can pick a need and a seed that the matching between need and seed is very important so we can we can make a very productive sakura science uh, activity in future especially to uh, how we can nurture the intellectual tough human resources and how we can initiate the matching between the bilateral activity between both the countries and the key point for me i think is the cross appointment if you are involved in both places you can do better like what I am doing, that I have uh, positions in India and also in Japan in JIST. So by utilizing these two uh, responsibilities, we can we can make a better involvement in such activities. So uh, if I give my example, like that, how I inspired, because I, I count myself as a Sakura intern uh, before the Sakura started actually. So uh, after completing the graduation in India, in science and pharmacy, uh, I selected Japan to come in 1998 uh, to, to learn some biotechnology. But at that time, I think Japan was one of the uh, uh, country which, where we, we can see the very uh, high quality biotechnology and very taught biotechnology. So I selected Japan to come and learn the biotechnology. So I first time I came in Japan in 1998. And then I, uh, I, I, of course, I was the best scholar from my town. And I completed my master and PhD in Saitama University in Japan. And during that time, actually, my, during my master and PhD course, that was the first lesson I learned in Japan. That is the an attitude of gratitude. That how we can how we can learn and how we can give the society. We can be thankful to our society. Actually, indeed, actually, after 2004, I got a chance to uh, visit Cambridge, uh, this MRC laboratory in Cambridge, uh, for post of fellowship. But I declined and I selected to stay in Japan and to continue my bilateral activities in Japan. So that was one of the, my motivation that why, how I continued my activity in Japan. So you can see here that uh, the career buildup which I had in both the country, in India and Japan, uh, trying to maintain the activity in both the part, like uh, as, a, as a faculty members or as a company members, and then uh, trying to merge many universities which can contribute joint activity in the border countries and many industries. So by this, actually, uh, although I have a, a multiple fields area in my uh, journey career, but what is important for uh, bilateral activities that whatever experience you have has to be transformed in the society. And this I learned actually uh, while my staying in Japan that uh, we should not just try to find the user for our research but actually we need to find the use we need to find the research for our user and for that actually i engaged in development of two startups in both the countries so one is the bio solution in india and another is the bioseed in japan so we came with the idea that how our research can be transformed for the immediate need in our society and that's why so first need which i pick in 2015 was the how we can overcome this problem of heavy metal toxicity in in our groundwater uh, in recent last six years, I think we had seen many outbreaks in India, which comes only because of the heavy metal contamination in the groundwater. Like in 2015, 17, 
16, 19, and 20, there are several cases. And, and one of the very recent cases in, 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 the, uh, in one of the town in, in South of India, that many people within a week, and within, 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 within one week has injured kidney failure and many other epilepsies. So these diseases all are coming because of some contamination in the drinking water. So here we came for a solution that how we can find a solution because till now the testing is happening in the laboratories. It takes a time, it takes time, a cost, and it is not easy to uh, do the testing everywhere. So we came here an idea that we converted the conventional three electrode chemistry into the screen printing technology and we develop a portable device that can be bring anywhere. It doesn't cost much and it can detect the heavy metals in just a couple of minutes and we, we can we can we can trace the alarm. So this is something what we developed for the need of India. And uh, we took this device in the field and we, we, we got the signal that some area in, the, in our state of Rajasthan has highly alarming and about the contamination of lead. So this is one of the issue uh, we also surveyed. Then next, how we can remove these heavy metals from the water. So we, we collaborated in one of the company in Japan and using the geolite materials, we could able to make some filter that can easily trace these heavy metals. This is a filter which cannot uh, remove the good minerals, but can trace the heavy metals. So this, this such type of filter technology, or I think it can be a smart technology. It can be installed anywhere and it can be utilized anywhere. So by using those technology, like you can see here in this video, that in this small uh, cap, we have the filter and this dye, which is already involved in this water cannot, can, can be traced out, can be removed from this filter. So this is how uh, it's uh, maybe you can see that when we when we when we try to filter the water from this bottle, you can see that it will be very clean now. So this is way that how we can utilize the smart solution, uh, especially some smart materials that can be used to filter out this trace metal contamination. Then the second uh, need that I picked actually recently after this COVID area that how we can develop a lab free robust testing system because. Uh, Till now, the COVID testing is occurring only in the laboratories. So how we can develop a system which, which can be done anywhere without a laboratory. So now we are coming with a new approach with Japanese uh, companies and uh, some collaborators in Kyoto University that we, we are making a robot. In this robot, we can feed, uh, we can feed 50, 100 samples at a time. And within 30 minutes, we can get the results. So this is a very mobile and automated robot that can be utilize our uh, some high sensor technology and can do the COVID testing anywhere, anywhere without of any laboratories. Then the third need, which I picked in two year web that how Indians can help the one of the need in Japan that uh, the Japanese aging country. So in 2019, we made a agreement uh, with Well Group. Well Group is one of the very famous society in, in, in Kansai region, which operate more than 34 medical and nursing facilities. So we are preparing our nursing students and these students can come to Japan and can actually few already have selected uh, and they are uh, about to come to Japan in this program. So once they are coming here, they can they can help what, what the Japan need. So such type of need and what we have, the seed technology in both the country, if we can match these two together, I think we can, we can make a better Sakura science, uh, what we call the Sakura science and beyond. So actually uh, what I said, because I have involved almost uh, more than 15 years in such programs. The first uh, program we, which we organized in uh, Tokyo University in 2007, and then continuously we are inviting the students at eight, 11 and 12. And so all the students who are coming and becoming part of Sakura Science or some exchange programs can be available as a sort to continue these activities. So I'm very feel proud that 77 students till now has been visited uh, under our programs. And uh, I can see Do Ms. Nikita-san, who is already here. So she already engaged in our, uh, how to uh, to make the activity in this alumni. And uh, I'm very happy to see her role. Actually, many of the students who visited in Sakura Science are already involved in my projects. And they are really indeed doing a very great job to, to, to make the, bridge the activity between both the countries. So this is a good example that, uh, how we can find a need and then finding a seed and matching together between the country and let's contribute to build up the society for the to achieve the SDG by 2020. So that's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So. Uh... Oh, thank you very much, Ray. So is it possible? 
So, uh, 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 Professor uh, Hiraoki Wagatsuma, yes. sir. Go ahead. Now, can I share the screen? Um, so, uh, there was some, yes, sir. There was some uh, technical difficulty. So <clears throat> now we will have Professor Hiroaki Wagatsuma's talk. He is from Kyushu Institute of Technology. Yes. So, Thank you very much. Yes, so uh, sorry you were the troublesome and I use now backup computer now. So this is a Q-Tech. So I'm sorry, uh, I was born in the northern part of Japan, a very cold place. We have the two meter high the winter uh, the snow winter season. But now I'm working in the uh, southern part of Japan. This is a Kyushu in a warm area. We have so many things now. So this is a Q-Tech. Uh, so many Indian uh, students are coming, uh, fortunately. And what is the topic that I buy the university and uh, my faculty and especially my uh, laboratory? The brain science and engineering. We are trying to connect these different things, but um, this is a very important, the flexibility and intelligence embedding the, the robot, for example. I'm studying at the mathematics. That's why theoretical mathematics is very important. So this is a link for the, why I'm getting the position in here. Uh, the Professor Yamakawa the started the COE project is one of the, uh, the educational projects in Japan and try to collaborate physiology and uh, psychology and solely in a model and the device and robot. This is a kind of a very important initiation in my QTEC project 2002 to 2008. So then uh, it's my department focusing on the collaboration, brain sciences, theory and the model and implementation robot. I'm studying over the innate system, the human being from the psychology or the, uh, the emotion and uh, the intelligence too. But the other professor also collaborating this uh, kind of the mission. So therefore, uh, there are three mission in intelligence, embodiment, and the social contribution. Therefore, this is not listed to the, uh, the pure brain science, but also the application. We try to embed it, this kind of things with the robot or some assist device, or even in the industrial company. Uh, recently, one of the topics is the automated driving system. We need to think about such a risk of them, but also they uh, try to uh, cooperate a uh, human and machine. This is one of the topic I'm studying here. And there, they are the access device for the disabled people or some logical uh, the inference or a reasoning system, or the EG, a uh, brain wave the, uh, the examined from the super athlete. This is one of the topics that's why so many people are interested in, especially in the people from India, uh, the visiting the, for the internship program, but also the PhD program here. So fortunately, uh, my proposal was accepted long term in the Sakura Science uh, the program, then collaborating the pe uh, people in India. It's initiated 2015 and the two person come. So then I'm collaborating with the professor at the, at the Bajatalier at the IIT Campo. And then uh, so many grad at the um, undergrad and uh, at the master student, PhD student is coming from the IIT Campo. Uh, the mostly in eight to the uh, the ten person. I'm frequently visit to the IIT Campo for the uh, my special lecture one week. So then the, I'm selecting the the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the talented uh, the Indian student there, uh, making the lecture and the uh, test. So then ten people selected to come to Japan. This is a, uh, one of the scenes that the museum the Kitakyushu. So then people are enjoying, but also they are studying about brain sciences. This is a, uh, one of the machines to examine the brain waves, but also motion uh, analysis. 
Then the, some of the special lecture there and making robot or 3D printer. And they are making some udon or Japanese culture at uh, explains also we are as uh, uh, prepared. Of uh, uh, so many such effects we have. So then my level three started from the uh, 2010 and the international student uh, that increased. So then publication, uh, Barbie saying that uh, from India is one of the good students, uh, the, my PhD student, he published Cuban journal. And then that kind of effect it, uh, transmitted the, uh, the uh, more the mutual effects for the, uh, the nice uh, the go uh, government uh, related project in Japan, four government projects, the, the two academic industry projects, and also international collaboration with India, uh, Horizon EU, or JICA, MG, Mongolia, and France. This kind of project going on. So then my level three budget is increased now. This is one of the things. So many people are interested in my level three, but also QTEC and for the master and the PhD course. If according to such an interaction and the internship program uh, supported by Sakura Science Program, I skip so many details, but um, we are thinking about the okay, automated driving projects, EEG brain, the robotics and the uh, risk analysis, logistics, uh, machine, the robot, robot. So then uh, one of the uh, recent topic is that government related projects. So then the, uh, we are thinking about cyber physical spaces. Uh, uh, we are collaborating with the robotic company Yaskawa, uh, try to rebuild the, some uh, human robot collaboration, making it uh, some things, especially Obento. Uh, this is one of the examples of the demonstration we are doing. This is a digital thing we are saying. So my student is at a, is at a learn about such as the basics, the industry 4.0 or the society 5.0. So then they are, they are still and contribute to Japanese company and in industrial things, but this is a very intelligent robot. Thinking a lot like a, a human uh, logical reasoning working well. And then this is the, uh, the another picture, some strategy to solve some specific uh, puzzles, uh, like human uh, intelligence is clearly embedded in the robotic system. So then uh, I would like to summarize my level three and the, uh, I have the, the, the several uh, the student, the international PhD student coming from India so they are coming from India, Japan, get PhD. Then mostly they're working in Japanese industrial company. Other, uh, okay, they, they have a high salary rather than master. Okay, Japan have no such a, they are the differences that the race or their origin. Uh, they, people, uh, people are evaluated only by skill or ability. That's why they have a good salary now. So this is one of the, the last news. We have the managing the global AAR course. It supports the max scholarship, full scholarship program. Uh, program. We are supporting three person the PhD course, three person the master course. But uh, separately, individual professor have the another budget. That's why we are supporting PhD as a student as a, by paying the salary. Thank you so much the the, uh, the kind attention. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have some questions from the uh, participants for you. Yes. So one of the questions is, intelligence is expected from a robot, but will this robot feel emotions like humans do? Yes, it's possible now. There's a, there are two types of the artificial intelligence we have. One is a data-driven AI. Uh, other thing is a logical reasoning AI. This is uh, the one of the, uh, the two schemes. Now that it's a time to embed it, even if the robot automated driving system, you can learn this kind of thing in Japan. Is that okay? okay. Uh, and the next question is, uh, yes. what are the work being done on artificial intelligence? Uh, could, you, could you repeat again? Uh, uh, what are the work being done on artificial intelligence? Okay, artificial intelligence is working well. 
inside the uh, the gift, uh, the visual recognition. What kind of the items in in the world or the recognition item? This is uh, the sensory uh, information. Secondly, decision making. What is the best option or st strategy or schedule? Final one is the uh, action control. How they can accurately grab some soft material, for example. These kind of things very are uh, supported by artificial intelligence now. Okay. Okay. Uh, there's one more question. Yes. Someone is asking that I'm working on bionic arm controlled by EMG, and yes. I'm impressed by your work. I want to do an internship under your guidance. Please yes. guide yes. me how to contact you for the same. Okay, uh, the, you can contact the Circle Science program, my course, but also, yes. Yes, I'm managing a Circle Science program focusing on the, such as the brain machine interface issue. And uh, we offer this kind of things uh, the measurement EEG or EMG and the making the robot arm, for example. Yes, you can try to contact with me. Uh, you can check the website, even the Google website, or the Google site, or QTech website. So then you you can try to catch such a recent information. What kind of internship program we can offer? Is it okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, so uh, thank you, sir. So now uh, Mansi will announce the winners of the e-poster competition. Please, Mansi. Yes. So for the e-poster competition, the uh, I would like to announce the winners. The third. Uh, winner is Vinayat Ravi, who made a poster on winning over COVID-19 via international relations. I would like to congratulate Vinayat Ravi if he's here in the meeting. Going on to the second winner, the, uh, the participant who came second uh, made a poster on dynamic cultural mix between India and Japan. I would like to congratulate Ariv uh, Aravind Revi for making such a wonderful poster. Congratulations. Now, coming on to the first, the person who came first, I would like to give a hearty congratulations to Aditya Gupta who came first and made a poster on winning over COVID-19 via international relations. It's such a great poster. Congratulations to all the winners. Uh, you will get your certificates from JST soon. Thank you, Mansi. So friends, now we will take a short break of five minutes. Meeting will be continued. So please do not leave the meeting.
welcome everyone let us continue now the next speaker is mr miyamoto shingo he is minister head of economic section sir please hello um, hello everyone can you hear me yes sir okay so i'm going to share my screen just one second can you see the presentation yes sir it's visible okay thank you so i will start um thank you namaskar uh thank you for having me over to um talk to you guys today So my job today is to try to convince as many as possible from the participants to come study in Japan. Um so I will just go dive into my presentation, okay? Um so as a number of the distinguished speakers in the beginning spoke, um Japan and India has a strategic partnership, a special strategic and global partnership we call it. And our prime ministers meet normally once every year at least. and uh as i have indicated in the red font um they have noted the steady increase in the number of indian students in japan and also have welcomed the sakura science uh pr program uh as a really meaningful um program to boost exchanges between the young scientists of our two, our two countries so i just wanted to indicate that fact but then in my next slide i want to look at how many people are coming to japan from india to study actually and i think these are the newest numbers that my staff got for me and if you compare these numbers you know from one country to another in this region it looks yeah it looks like it's kind of in par pretty much in the thousands from each country uh india has 1609 people studying in japan right now Uh but if you look at the other countries like Nepal, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka they have more. Now, but these numbers look like they're at par, but I tried to um divide these numbers by the population of each country to see how many people per um 100,000 uh population was coming to Japan. And and the next slide shows this graph. Now, this is kind of starting a little bit shocking as well to me because I'm now working to uh you know improve the relationship between Japan and India but uh ev for every 100k people India only has 0.14 persons coming to Japan to study now if you look at some other countries like Nepal they have 643 more people per 100k population coming to Japan to study uh and also Sri Lanka and Bangladesh has hundreds more than India coming to Japan so it's a little bit interesting here um to to look at this data and think about why so few people are coming to Japan from India despite the fact that India has a huge population and a huge a uh, pool of very talented people so i thought about this i've been thinking about this for a long time and uh you know um i i i came up with several questions so one is is japan so unimportant to india that indians young indians would seek to go to other countries like the uk us or australia or you know anywhere else but not to japan And then number 2 is are universities in Japan not competitive not attractive enough for them to come And then the third question is is it too expensive to study in Japan And then uh the fourth question is is Japanese a little bit too um frightening to even try to learn because it seems like a very different language Now um moving on to the first question is Japan unimportant which is probably not true um these graphs the pie charts show 
the um, development assistance relationship with India and Japan. If you look at the graph on the left hand side, Japan does every year about 1.4 trillion yen worth of development assistance around the world. Now, uh, this is a pretty big amount. Japan is one of the biggest development partners for, um, in the world. Um, but out of the 1.44 trillion yen, 26% of all of that is directed to India alone. More than one fourth of what Japan does around the world comes to India. Now, if you look at it from the Indian side, the right-hand side graph, India receives about $6 billion of external assistance for development every year. Now, 41% of that comes from Japan. And then the second largest donor, this IDA thing is, these are the international development banks like the World Bank or the Asian Development Bank. They, they all of them combined is only about 10%. That's like one fourth of Japan. And then the third partner is Germany, which is also like 9%. And the remainder is the rest of, of the world. So you can see how, how, how large uh, a role that Japan is playing for the development of India as a country. Now, um, these are just some examples. We are now financing six uh, metro projects around the country. The, the big one is in Delhi, of course, but also in Ahmedabad, Mumbai, uh, Bangalore, Chennai, and also Kolkata. And then we're also doing the, uh, the high-speed rail project, the Shinkansen. All of you may have ridden on it while you were in Japan. I think the one we're going to get in India is going to be red, but it's going to look exactly the same. Uh, so these are some of the projects, the big ones that we're, we're, we're working on right now. So um, about investments coming to India from Japan, Japan is also one of the biggest uh, investors in India. If you look at the pie chart on the left, you see Singapore and Mauritius as two biggest investors, but these are not you know, really Singaporean or Mauritian companies. These are companies that are using Singapore and Mauritius as an investment hub. So I would guess that, you know, a, a big chunk of the companies that are investing to India from Singapore, although it's counted for Singaporean investment, are Japanese companies as well. And, you know, it, uh, this, uh, excluding these two uh, big investment hubs, Japan is among the top three investors, uh, about the same size as the US and the Netherlands. And, and you know all these Japanese companies that are, that are active in India, um, very strong in the manufacturing sector. And they're also um, contributing to the Make in India uh, policy of India. Uh, for example, um, Maruti Suzuki is producing in India and exporting from India, for instance. Um, next slide is that. It's a little bit cute example, I think, but this is the first page of um, my Hindi textbook, okay? And sorry. Textbook, and this is the first skit they have in the text. And in this skit, this guy called Pratap, who is, uh, I think he grew up in the UK or something, but he's back in India to study Hindi. And he's meeting this family for the first time, meeting Kamlaji and her child, uh, Raj. And Pratap asks Raj, like, uh, is that car um, uh, Japanese? This car, I guess. And, and uh, Raj's answer is kind of cute. He says, Vogari gari Japani nahi hai, Vogari maruti hai. So this kind of shows it's in a Hindi language textbook, and it kind of shows how localized Japanese companies have become in India. You know, they're not even seen as Japanese companies. So this is the extent of the um, integration we have uh, economically between the two countries. Now, are Japanese universities not attractive? Uh, this is also not true, because if you, if you, these are just some of the indicators, but if you look at the number of Nobel Prize laureates from Japan, the number that I was given was 26, but it could be 28. I saw some uh, numbers saying 28. 
But it's anyway, it's top in Asia, like seventh or sixth or something in the world. Uh, Fields Prize laureates, we have three. And then the number of universities ranked within the what, top 1,000 of the world, we have 33, which is the same as India, coincidentally. So level of education and research in Japan is very high. So this shouldn't be an issue. Cost of education. Um, this is uh, the approximated cost of living and you know, paying for tuition in these countries. Now, if you look at Japan, it's pretty low, actually. Um, it's about a little less than 12 lakhs, um, which is like one third of the United States, uh, less than half of Australia and New Zealand. Um, so it's, it's, and of course, you know, as I will explain later, we offer scholarships uh, as well, uh, as well as other um, facilities for international students who want to come to Japan to study. So cost is probably not the reason that Japan is not being chosen. So, Calling me. Um, okay, thank you. Sorry about that. Um, so let me go on to the next slide. Now, is Japanese a little bit too hard to learn? Uh, this might be the common stereotype. For Japanese, because you know it's it's not a very commonly spoken language. Actually, it's only spoken in Japan. But after I came to India, I started studying Hindi, and I found that there's a starking similarity between um, Hindi and Japanese. So I wrote the sentence in Hindi: "Delhi mein COVID-19 ki sthiti din ba din behtar hoti ja rahi hai." Okay, and I wrote the same sentence in Japanese. Delhi dewa COVID-19 no jokyo wa hini hini yokunatte imasu. Now, if you do a comparison with the, these two sentences, which are not really simple sentences, you, as you can see, as I drew in the blue lines between the two languages, there's a one-on-one -on -one correspondence between the Japanese words and the Hindi words. And this amazingly includes things like hoti jarahihe, Okay, in Japanese, we have each word that corresponds to these that are used in the same order, in the same manner to express what is in English expressed by saying is getting better. Now, um, this is pretty amazing considering that Japanese and Hindi are from different language groups, but it is true. If you are a Hindi speaker, you can just substitute each word and this includes postpositions like kakeki or tak or you know um, things like that. Just just exchange them with the Japanese words in the same order, and you will have an almost perfect Japanese sentence. Now, if you do the comparison with English, it's very clear. You know, there are some words that are not even existent in in, in each other's languages, where which I've indicated with the X mark. And then the ordering of the words is just radically different. So you have this messy situation. Um, even to say is getting better, the progressive tense, they don't use jana or rechna. You know, they, they use is and then they put ing on the verb. But in Japanese, we actually use jana and rechna uh, in the same way and the hona uh, as we do in Hindi. So. I think Japanese is actually an easy language for Hindi speakers to learn. Uh, some of you may have studied Japanese and you may have noticed the same thing, but I just wanted to point it out because, um, you know, if you go to Japan, of course, maybe the lectures are done in English and, you know, your papers, research papers will be written in English, but what the heck, you're in Japan and, and you should learn the language, you know, just for the heck of it. And it will, greatly enhance your experience while you're in Japan. So going on to my explanation of the uh, the MEXT scholarship. So MEXT is the Education Ministry of Japan, and, and they're also in charge of technology and science and technology. Um, they do offer a pretty comp comprehensive scholarship to foreign students. Um, 
basically, as you can see here, um, you know, they offer different programs, which I have in the next slide. Um, depending on type, the scholarships are offered for one academic year to five years. And usually in the beginning of the scholarship period, they offer a six months to a year of Japanese language training. And also um, the tuition is exempted. And in addition to that, they offer the airfare of coming to Japan and going back to your original country after your studies are done. And then um, they also give you a monthly allowance depending on your level from between 117,000 to 145,000 yen per month. Um, this is something like um, 10,000 rupees. No, no, 100,000 rupees, I think, per month, um, which is not a huge amount, but then it's probably just about the enough, you know, just about enough money to, to, to have a decent life in Japan and then also study at the same time. Um, recruitment start in the beginning of the fiscal year, which is April in Japan, like in India. So um, this year's recruitment has been finished already. So if you want to apply, you have to wait for April next year, but you, do, you, know, you need to do the preparation. So I think it means you have enough time. Now, these are the programs that are offered. Um, one is for research students. Um, this is graduate level. Um, age requirements like under 35, these, these things are all on the website, uh, which was, I, I think I had the link in the previous slide. Um, but then we have other programs for undergraduate students or College of Technology students or specialized training college students. And they are slightly different, but you can go through the application forms and, and all the requirements. Um, there is a website dedicated to studying in Japan um, on the website of the Japanese embassy in Delhi. So you can come there and, and click through the links and, and find these information. Um, there are also many scholarships and tuition reduction or exemption systems offered by JASSO or um, uh, individual universities or local governments or even private companies. So um, you can check the study in Japan website um, or also in the Japanese embassy's website, um, the one that I mentioned. There is a system that uh, is there which you can use to search through these um, facilities that you can utilize to um, make it easier for you to come to Japan to study. So this is the end of my presentation. Uh, please come to Japan uh, and study. Um, and we're waiting for your applications. Thank you very much. And I would like to answer any questions you have. Thank you, sir. That was a very thorough explanation. Uh, we would take the questions after the presentation of two more uh, speakers. We would take all the questions together. So now I would like to invite Mr. Miyauchi yes, uh, Yasuyuki, Director of University of Tokyo, India office. Uh, uh, thank you for... India Sakura Science Club Alumni Association and Japan Science and Technology Agency. My name is Yasuki Miyauchi, the director of the University of Tokyo India office. My mission is a representative of the University of Tokyo uh, in India. However, 99% of my work is a uh, promotion of uh, study in Japan. Introduction of Japanese universities and encouraging young students uh, to study in Japan. Yeah, frankly speaking, uh, Japan is not so uh, popular. Frankly speaking, unpopular. There are three major reasons. Uh, because of the English media program. Second, the scholarship. And the third is the job. Uh, opportunities. Uh, the, uh, there is a big information gap between uh, Japan and India. Therefore, in order to uh, fill up this gap, we are not doing the uh, uh, promotion and then uh, seminars. Usually, I visit the uh, uh, all uh, 
uh, universities and um, uh, high schools, and they uh, make a direct contact face to face. However, due to the uh, um, uh, COVID-19, it is impossible. Therefore, at this moment, we are doing, I'm doing online uh, sessions. Last year, uh, I carried out 15 sessions, and then this year, uh, we are carrying out 26 uh, on online uh, seminars. And uh, we are now uh, expecting nearly uh, 10,000 participants in this year. In order to uh, carry out these missions, I'd like to ask you a favor for the uh, people who have uh, some experience in Japan. The direct uh, uh, information from the, uh, the experience of student is very useful. And uh, therefore, I'd like to ask you to distribute our event information uh, to the uh, uh, prospective students and families. And if uh, you have a time, please uh, 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 part, uh, take a part as a present of the, your family experience talk in our online seminar sessions. At this moment, uh, we are not doing uh, the every Friday and then July and August will uh, conduct seminar uh, every Friday and Saturday. Therefore, if you are interested, please contact this uh, mail address. Thank you. Thank you for your kind attention. All the best. Thank you very much again. So uh, now, Ms. Shweta Sondra Rajan is a member of India Sakura Science Alumni Club. She is a first year student at the University of Tokyo Peak Course. So I invite Ms. Shweta. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Good morning, everyone. I'm Shweta Sandararajan, a first year undergraduate environmental science student in the University of Tokyo. It's an immense pleasure to be a part of this wonderful event. Let me begin with my journey, which uh, started four years ago. At that time, I didn't start learning Japanese with the idea of studying in Japan. But as days passed by, I got completely absorbed with Japanese. This fascination served as the root of my passion for Japan. This fascination was also followed by days of research on Japan, its culture, education, growth, technology, innovation, and finally ended up with a new radiant insight into Japan. The fact that both India and Japan pose an issue with population and in opposite senses was concerning. I realized that a mutual partnership between India and Japan in the field of education and work could be a potential game changer. Besides, Japan is glowing with wide spectrum of opportunities and hopes to help one with a strong passion to reach great heights. Furthermore, Japan is credited as the safest country to live in uh, with Tokyo making it to the top of the list as the safest city in 2019. These facts, along with my experience in Sakura Science Program 2018, were more than convincing to make up my mind to pursue my higher education in Japan. Later, I began hunting for universities and programs. Uh, I did have a hard time balancing my high school studies and the application process to universities, but the constant support from my school and the universities kept me on pace. I actually learned a lot during this period. I was convinced that it is better to attend briefing sessions and explore various sources to get a better picture of the course and to find the ones that go parallel with our interests. Uh, not to mention, it is encouraging that several study and work in Japan sessions are conducted recently. I also realized that extracurricular activities and non-academic skills are as significant as studies. 
it is important to shape ourselves from diverse aspects. Finally, Japanese language skills always comes in handy and it's definitely a fun path to walk through. After all the realization and efforts now, I'm delighted to get placed in one of the top universities in Japan and to pursue a field where my passion lies. Indeed, the pandemic hit hard on all our lives, but the university gave its best in supporting us with the smooth transition to online education through a well-set system. The administration, management, and professors support in sorting out the issues we face with this new reality. Although I haven't stepped into the university yet, it is great that I could connect with diverse students through several events organized to create a bond between international and Japanese students. These efforts gives us hope that just brushes away the chaotic situation we are caught in. Before I conclude, I would like to say that one may find it hard or assume it is hard to learn Japanese or get into a Japanese university. But that's not an issue when one is motivated and dedicated. Japan welcomes everyone with passion, hard work, and determination to create a global impact in their chosen field. The more strong the collaboration between Japanese and Indian people, the more solid gets the base of the bridge between India and Japan. I hope India and Japan could find unity in diversity together. Thank you. Thank you, Shweta. Now, I would like to welcome Ms. Bhargavi Thakur. She's working in Japan as civil engineer at East Japan Railway Company. Ms. Parkavi, are you there? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. You're audible. Yeah. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Bhargavi Thakur, and I'm here uh, to give a short introduction about my life in Japan. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, JSD and Sakura Science Club Association to give uh, this amazing opportunity to, uh, first of all, uh, interact with you all and also to be able to listen to the amazing um, speeches and presentations by His Excellency Ambassador of India and Ambassador of Japan in India and India and Japan. And also the esteemed professors from both uh, India and Japan and also an interesting presentation by uh, Miyamoto-san. So, okay, uh, I would like to continue with my presentation now, which is uh, comparatively simple. So I want to start with a brief introduction about myself. So uh, I graduated BTEC from uh, civil engineering from IIT Hyderabad and then immediately came to Japan from pursuing masters in the same field. I graduated from the University of Tokyo after two years in 2019, pretty recently actually. Uh, so I started working at JR East from uh, as soon as I graduated from 2019 December. So it's almost been, it's going to be two years since I uh, started working in Japan. So uh, to share to share my uh, life as a student or uh, to share my experience. So basically uh, the life of, life of a student in Japan was uh, more or less uh, these factors. It was university and research and socializing. So uh, the main thing here is it's not just the international environment. Of course, there, there are international people also, but the, the good thing about Japan is that there's also a very big community, you know, Indian community. And I mean, it's, it's a big community, but it's also a small world. So it's almost pretty much like, uh, you know, all, all the Indians who are here. So the, many Indians from many uh, top universities in, of India come here, like many smart people come here and you, have, you get the opportunity to interact with so many smart people and to gain uh, their, to see their perspectives and uh, interact with a lot of people so yeah and also it's a travel it's, and the third main factor was traveling and since you all know japan is a very beautiful country and uh, 
traveling is like uh, one of the main part of the life. So obviously these all photos are before COVID where uh, people in such huge crowds can could still gather. Unfortunately, this can't be done now. So moving on to my uh, the brief introduction about my work. So to talk about JRT East, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you all know about JRT East. So it's uh, like like Indian Railways, there is there's Japan Railways, which was divided into seven private companies. So uh, JR East is the largest of the JR companies which, which, with a network of 7,000 kilo railway network and a lot of uh, 17 million users per day. So my main work is to work is as a civil engineer and I work in the construction office of uh, JR East which mainly manages the construction projects from start to end. I work in the technical division in the concrete group. A little, um, how do I say, it? it's a little a detail about my work. I'm pretty sure uh, some of you, who, many, uh, some of you who cannot understand will be bored. But uh, to explain very briefly, uh, there are five process, five stages in the construction project, uh, typical construction project. So my current work is on is on, in research and design or research, design and research. So uh, doing the design check of new uh, structures or uh, improvement projects of GREs, railway structures, mostly on concrete. And also a little bit of research and development of how to improve the efficiency or how to reduce the cost of the projects and all related to again concrete structures. Uh, please contact me if you are uh, further interested in these topics. So coming to the final part, and which is this is where I want to focus today. So what uh, I would like to talk about the main um, things I feel which are good and good as working in Japan. So the first point is that uh, there are good, very good training programs for freshers, like for people like, like me who who's directly joined the uh, job field uh, as soon as they graduated. So like both on the job and off the job, OJT and off JT. So uh, most of the companies, like the core and also non-core companies offer really excellent training programs. Some might be in Japanese, but some, some are also in English. So I would say it's a very good place to start your uh, professional career or to gain a very good experience. And the second point is that uh, there are many opportunities to change your career path. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying changing a career path is, is the must, but for example, if you're interested in working somewhere out of your field, like if you do, if you do not, if you want to explore other fields or other opportunities or other things, for example, here I stated like even as wide as agricultural, people who studied like as different as agricultural engineering can still uh, work in railways or can still work in software department. And there are many such examples in Japan. And it's, it's like Japan is a very good place to explore other fields if you are interested in working in them. And the third part is that uh, rather than uh, doing what you are said or rather than just, do, just going with the flow, Japanese companies also value the interests of uh, the employees. Like uh, there is a periodical evaluation of progress every like every six months over every one year. But apart from what they want you to do, they also take into account and into account your own interests. Like for example, is this what you want to do, or is this how you want to proceed, and what is that you you are interested in? Like self, it, they also uh, concentrate a lot on self learning. And also exploring your interests by yourself, which is both good for you and the company because you, you cannot do something that you don't like and properly, and then it's not also good for the company if you don't like your work. So they put a lot of uh, focus on your interests and to align your interests with the job field. So these are like there are many other points which I have not mentioned here today, but uh, to say simply, these are the main points that I think are uh, great, and also of course there are like many great employment benefits like for example japan is one of the few countries which provides uh, overtime pay and also it also gives your commuting allowance and and, and and a lot of other things small things I, I think but are very um great if you want to work in japan i guess yeah that's all for today and uh please let me know if you have any questions thank you Thank you, Ms. Bhagavi. 
now uh, we have a few questions first question is for mr miyamoto shingo a uh, person is a uh, participant wants to know that he's a mechanical engineer student and he wished to do his masters in product or industrial designing so do i have the same support and scope that a research scholar receives one second one second thank you um yes well i i'm sorry i can't really answer your question precisely at this moment because we have to you know we you will have to contact the embassy of japan and and ask that question and see what kind of response we can give you but i i do encourage you if you're interested um do visit our website and there is you know um an email address that's indicated so do send your question there and we will look into your you know details and see um what kind of programs are available for you when you send in your question please mention that you participated in the sakura science um program alumni meet uh just mention that word in your email or the you know the title of the email so we can identify you um more quickly okay thank you and there's one last question uh it is for miss uh, bhargavi thakur how did you manage your expenses during masters uh thank you for your question uh so i came for i came uh, i pursued my masters under the jica scholarship actually but apart from jica scholarship there are also many other scholarships like miyamoto san has also just mentioned about the next scholarship or there are many uh, scholarships for people who are already working like the adb scholarship or or many other jasa scholarship or such scholarships so the the scholarship amount they give is pretty much enough for uh, for your living expenses and it's actually more than <laughs> your living expenses and you can also actually use them for your uh, for other interests and other livelihoods so it's yeah i would uh, ask you to uh, explore the scholarships given by japanese government and many other such scholarships thank you uh due to shortage of time if uh, the participants have any other questions they can mail them to us and we will get them answered so uh now i hand over the screen to mr kuroki sinichi principal fellow sakura science program headquarters japan science and technology agency sir we are at sanke uh Antara san and also uh, my son moderators of today to webinar uh, and hello to all participants of today I'm Kurokishi Ichi of the Japan Science and Technology Agency uh, congratulations on the wonderful and successful ending of today's webinar I would like to give my sincere thanks to all of you for your participation and uh, mutually beneficial exchange of information Today's webinar is the third Indian Sakura Science Club alumni meeting, but it's the first time to do it online. It is unfortunate that we cannot talk to each other face to face. On the other hand, as expressed in the theme of today's webinar, Sakura Science and Beyond, we are participating in an exchange meeting not limited in within India. In fact, it goes beyond India to Japan and across the world. connecting all the sakura science club members today's webinar has focused on how we can promote science and technology and innovation of india and japan and that is for what looking theme the webinar started with inspiring speech of dr jitendra chu main coordinator of the indian sakura science club alumni association and dr kishi teru of jst today We also had many excellent speeches and presentations of prominent and special guests. I encouraging speech from Mr. Hosoda Hiroyuki, member of the House of Representatives and the President of the Japan India Parliamentarians Friendship League. And moving speeches from two ambassadors, Ambassador Suki Satoshi and Ambassador Sanjay Kumar Varma. In addition, wonderful speech from Mr. Matsuo Hiroki, Senior Deputy Minister of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology, Japan, 
and Dr. Sanjay Mishra, advisor and head to inspire division of DSD India. We also had many practical and useful speeches from professors and students of universities and so on, including helpful explanation of mixed scholarship from Minister Miyamoto Shingo, Embassy of Japan. I do hope that with the inspiring and encouraging speeches of today's speakers, all of you have found Japan interesting and attractive and will think of revisiting Japan for study, research and work and so on. And I'd like to express my deep appreciation to all the speakers for their contribution today. Also, I should express my deep appreciation to the co coordinators of uh, India Sacred Science Club uh, Alumni Association for their time and devotion to make today's event a success. Finally, uh, let me touch upon the future activity of Sacred Science Club. Another alumni meeting of Sakura Alumni Association in Sri Lanka is scheduled on June 26. Similar meeting of Indonesia, Vietnam, and Malaysia are also scheduled within this year. So please stay in touch with Sakura Science Club through our Sakura website, Facebook, mail magazines, and so on. I look forward to seeing you at the future Sakura Science Club events, and also seeing you in Japan. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Kuroki Shinichi. Now, uh, I would like to hand it over to Ms. Disha Malik, coordinator of India Sakura Club Alumni Association for giving some closing remarks. Konnichiwa, everyone. A very good afternoon to all of you. It is rightly said by Gautam Buddha that if you light a lamp for somebody, it will also brighten your path. Dr. Kishi Teru, uh, Director General, Sakura Science Program Headquarters, JST. Honorable Mr. Hosoda Hiroyuki, Member of Parliament, uh, Government of Japan. His Excellency, Mr. Suzuki Satoshi, Ambassador, wow. Embassy of Japan in India. His Excellency, Mr. Sanjay Kumar Verma, Ambassador, Embassy of India in Japan. Mr. Matsuo Hiroki, Minister of MEX, Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology, Japan. Dr. Sanjay Mishra, Advisor and Head Inspired Division, Department of Science and Technology, Ministry of Science and Technology, India. Our most valued invited guests and dignitaries. It's my privilege to have been asked to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion I, Disha Malik, on behalf of the India Sakura Science Club Alumni Association, coordinators and members extend a very heartfelt gratitude to all of you for being a part of the third Indian Sakura Science Club Alumni Meet 2021. I must mention a deep sense of appreciation for Mr. Miyamoto Shingo, Minister, Embassy of Japan in India, and Mr. Miyayuchi Yasuyuki, Director, University of Tokyo, India office for enlightening us about the MEX scholarship and about studying in Japan. And also Ms. Shweta Sondra Ranjan and Ms. Bhargavi Thakur for sharing their study and work experiences in Japan with us. We are all inspired by your great words. I take this opportunity to also extend our most sincere thanks to all our guest presenters, Professor Murli Dhar Meryala, Shibora Institute of Technology, and Professor Rajiv Shaw, Kyo University, Dr. Hira Yuki Vagatsuma, Associate Professor at QTech Japan and Dr. Manish Biani, Visiting Professor Japan Advanced Institute of Science and Technology for their support and cooperation. I also wish to express my sincere gratitude to Mr. Nishikawa Yuji, Advisor for International Relation and Cooperation, Sakura Science Program Headquarters, Japan Science and Technology Agency. Dr. Jitender Chuk, Main Coordinator of India, SSC Alumni Association for their valuable guidance communication, support, and encouragement at every point in time to organize this great event. An event like this requires meticulous planning and execution, 
and i cannot thank everyone enough especially my fellow india ssc alumni association coordinators other ssc jsc members for the involvement they have shown and the willingness they have expressed to take on to the completion of task beyond their comfort zones particularly at a time like this hope and pray that the pandemic will end soon it's been a great pleasure to have you all please be vigilant maintain social distancing use sanitizers and mask and stay safe everyone thank you i got to go sir master thank you ms disha so with the permission from the organizers uh, jitendra sir shall we declare that the function is concluded <laughs> yes please go so thank you everyone for attending <laughs> thank you everyone stay safe thank you everyone bye thank you thank everyone. you very bye. much everybody thank you bye bye thank you sir thank you, thank you everyone see you